Hello, shrimpaholics and fish nerds. This is a good one for you. Let's learn how to strengthen the immune systems in our aquatic pets. A big thank you to Carrick Payton and Nick Teeter for donating these images that you guys are looking at. The orange and red parts that are showing on these dead shrimp show up shortly after they died, uh, and that's a result of bacteria. We all feed bacterial supplements and our aim is to grow beneficial bacteria on the surfaces uh, in all of our aquariums. Uh, and this is part of maintaining a healthy tank. Um, all bacteria and microorganisms are opportunistic. So this means if you have a depleted immune system, it's a lot easier for you to become sick. And that includes your fish and shrimp. One of the biggest players in health is vitamin C and that goes for yourself as well. So pay attention and maybe uh, take more vitamin C. Vitamin C actually goes by two different names. Uh, one of them being citric acid. So citric acid is a good preservative and it does contain some essential nutrients. Ascorbic acid is the actual vitamin C uh, and it can't be stored in the body. Uh, and it's the actual chemical name for vitamin C is ascorbic acid. I did receive a question on formic acid and that is not actually vitamin C. It's a preservative and an antibacterial agent and it's most notably produced by fire ants. So please don't give that to your shrimp or fish. So as you can see, I'm mixing ascorbic acid with reverse osmosis water. So what I've got is one teaspoon uh, to 50 mils of RO water. And yeah, I'm making a mess too. Just be sure to mix it until it's completely clear and there's no uh, little granules left in the bottom of your container. So about a half a dropper is a half a mil and a full dropper is about a full mil. In 10 gallons, I would do a half a dropper right into the tank twice a week. In 20, I would use the full mil twice a week. And as you can see on top of that, I put a few drops into the food. You can either let the food sit and dry or you can feed it as soon as it's absorbed. It doesn't matter. And yes, this is Mark Shrimp Tank's protein mix that I'm dripping some of it on. I also will drip it on any food, doesn't matter if it's powdered food or um, snowflake food, it will go on everything. So the vitamin C that I drip right straight into the tank is absorbed by all the little micro critters that you see swimming around in there and then they can be consumed by the shrimp or by the algae that the shrimp are eating off of. Now I will say here that it is important to not overfeed. If you are overfeeding, you are allowing food leftovers to become uh, the meal plan for a bacterial bloom. A good rule of thumb is to remove any uneaten food after two hours, uh, except the snowflake food because it doesn't really ever go bad. So aquariums can house several types of bacteria. Sometimes they can multiply to dangerous levels. Uh, any shrimp that have or fish that have depleted immune systems uh, can easily succumb to even um, an overload of beneficial bacteria. Um, so one bacteria in particular that's deadly in aquariums and to people who care for their aquariums is Vibrio, also known as Vibrionaceae and it's a gram-negative bacteria. Um, and they're uh, microorganisms, some species of which cause serious diseases in humans and other animals. Uh, even people who are immunosuppressed or take immunosuppressing medications uh, should not take care of any aquariums. Uh, these bad bacteria have found our way into our freshwater slightly warmer tanks um, so it's really important to be aware of it. Um, Alex from The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium had a mass die-off from Vibrio. Um, he's got a couple of videos up which I can add links to in the description. One is can I get sick from my fish tank and the other one is flesh-eating bacteria. Highly recommend if you have the time to watch those. He's a very smart fish keeper. TheFishSite.com describes all the reasons to give vitamin C. 
uh, I will leave the link down below for that. Um, but just to let you know, for your fish and shrimp, uh, they describe using ascorbic acid to promote collagen synthesis, wound healing, boost immune system, increase antioxidants, reduces the effects of toxic chemicals in the water, and prevents negative effects from uh, water temperature fluctuations. Uh, vitamin C helps to synthesize carnitine, adrenaline, epinephrine, serotonin, thyroxine, bile acids, and steroid hormones. Uh, vitamin C does a lot. Uh, it also helps to regulate the mold phase and quick formation of exoskeleton, especially in shrimp. Ascorbic acid is also integral part of proper egg formation for fish and shrimp. It also reduces the mortality of fish fry and shrimp baby death, so another bonus. I think it's also important to just put a little side note in there about the use of antibiotics. Antibiotics actually kills um, gut bacteria and microflora uh, in the fish and shrimp and humans too. Um, and that increases the need for even more vitamins and nutrients um, to be uh, run through the system. Uh, you know, nutrient dense foods. Uh, some of the foods that I like to feed include barley grass, spirulina, chlorella, moringa, bee pollen, nutritional yeast, and I also feed um, fresh and or blanched vegetables like this green bean here or cucumber. I serve that fresh for everybody. Um, red peppers, like it's all good. I just want to thank Mark from Mark Shrimp Tanks for um, suggesting giving vitamin C to shrimp and I'm glad I did because I did a whole lot of research in behind it and I think it's good for shrimp and fish, aquatic life in general, they all require vitamin C. And I think we'd resort a lot less to medications, um, antibiotics and stuff for our aquariums if we uh, we're continually boosting the immune system of the critters we're caring for. Um, I give vitamin C twice a week and I drop it on their food um, almost daily. So um, that's just a good indicator of how much vitamin C you can give. And while you're at it, take some vitamin C for yourself. Thanks for watching and please hit the like button.